Now, in the last session, we talked about the word of grace from God and the word of grace we can speak to people. And how we can encourage people to pray or to love, uh, to read the Bible or to serve God by the grace of God. I will spend a little time to talk about how we can talk about the law of God because it's not just grace, how we can talk about the law of God. And I want you to write down, there are a few ways you can use the law of God. How do you speak the law of God? It is not just for preaching and teaching, it's also for daily life. Now, first, I want to say what uh, the grace of word, a great, you know, uh, word of grace that we speak to people. Word of grace that we speak to people. Now, Word of grace from God is like, God loves us, that's word of grace from God. God loves us. God cares about us. God has a wonderful plan in our life. God will use our life greatly. God, God accepts us even when we fail. Okay. This is the grace of God. Now, I want to say this not only change how we preach, also change how we talk to people. Now, what's, we speak words of grace to people too. Now, this is a picture of my, me and my wife here. Uh -huh. I treasure my wife. First, because she's a very loving person. She's a very wise person. And she's the most important person on earth for me. So I treasure her. And also, if I want to make the best use of my life, I want to treasure my wife. So I speak words of grace to her all the time. I say to her many, many times a day I would say it to her through WhatsApp. I love you, I think about you. I care about you. But sometimes we say, what you've done is great. On Sunday, she just preached for me in a church. And I said, you did a great job. So these are words of grace. How I love her and care about her. And also words of appreciation. That means I appreciate what she has done. Do you appreciate your workers in the church? The people who serve God in your church? Do you, do you appreciate them? Do you say, wow, it's wonderful to have these people serve God and help me? Now, now, do you say words of appreciation to them? Like, I thank you very much. What you have done is beautiful. And God likes what you do. And, and I like what you do. Now, do you say those things to your the people who serve God in your church? Okay. Now, some people will say, well, but they, they serve God willingly. 
I don't have to thank them. <laughs> Let me ask you this. When you are pastors, when you are a pastor, and then your members come to you, thank you, pastor, for your message. You preach. No, no, Christ, And when they say to you, you preach very well. You help me very much in my spiritual life. Do you feel more uplifted, strengthened? Do you feel, do you feel happy? Let me ask you. Do people say that to you? 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 Do they say that to you much or not much? Much. Okay, very good. The said encourage you. Now, if you serve God for a long time, but no one ever thank you for serving God, for blessing them, would you sometimes wonder if the people really get help from my ministry? So, does the word of appreciation give you more strength, right? Now, our strength is mainly from God. But the Bible tells us to love one another, right? And everyone is, whatever is honorable, whatever is clean, remember all these things. So if you want your church to be more loving, it's one way to do it is by teaching the people to say words of appreciation. Okay. okay, that is word of grace. Now how about the law? How can we speak it? No, no, the law can be used in a few ways. You can write this down. One is exploring. Now, exploring means you don't know the answer. You try to find a way. For instance, you know, a few Christians talk to get together and say, well, how can we help this church to grow? And then we try to think, how can we make the church to grow? That's, you know, like exploring, trying to find ways. Uh, so for instance, you want to help your members to grow in the Lord. You can say this. You can say this. What do you think you can do for the Lord? Now you can write this down. What can we do for the Lord? It's helping the person to think. And then the person might say, well, I can cook, I can cook. And then we we'll say, what else can you do? Now, what you do can you say, what else can you do? And then the person might say, well, maybe I can sing, I can lead worship. And then you ask again, what, can, what else do you think you can do? He might say, I can visit people. So it's trying to find ways to help the person to follow the Lord, to obey the Lord. Instead of telling the person, you go and cook. You go and sing. You go and visit people. 
Is it very different when you say you explore? What do you think you can do for the Lord? Or how can we help the church to grow? And then people will think and find ways. Okay, the first way is exploring, so write that down. Second way, second way is guiding. Guiding. For, is, for instance, a, a husband and a wife come to you and they're fighting against each other and then they are in trouble and they ask you to help. And so we want to guide them to understand the problem and guide them to find ways to solve the problem. Now sometimes some leaders or pastors or Christians have a tendency just to tell them. Okay, forgive each other. Pray to God together. And you go home and pray together. And love each other. Let me tell you. If two persons are fighting, you tell them, go home and, and you know, pray together and forgive each other. Do you think they will do it? It might be hard, right? Guiding is like this. Now you can write down this. You can say, now, when your marriage has this, is in this situation, how does it make you feel? It might say, well, it makes me unhappy. And then you say, well, now that's guiding. I'm trying to guide them to see the problem. So if you're unhappy every day, uh, do you enjoy your life? No, no, come over. No, 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 and then we ask them what do you think you can do to change the situation so it's basically it's like this guiding is like this they are here and you like them to go there they are fighting and you like them to be loving each other. But it won't happen right away. So you guide them step by step. Guide them step by step to let them see how the situation makes them feel and then um, so what can you do about it so we're guiding them step by step to change for instance if your husband or wife doesn't answer your question doesn't talk to you now, maybe this is difficult. I'll, I'll change the example. Like, for instance, he has something he's angry with you. <laughs> now, many people might say, You're angry with me, I'm angry with you. It's just responding with anger. But we can say, well, uh, tell me why you're angry with me. I know you are unhappy. I'm sorry if I made you unhappy. I'm willing to change if you tell me why you're angry. 
rwose nciye bugufi kunamba bari rwose ndaza guhinduka rwose ariko umbwira impamvu wandagariye can you tell me how i can change ese wambwira iki uko nahindura icyo nahindura and how can we relate to each other better je nikute se twahuza is this better is it your better is guiding your spouse step by step to go from his situation to a gradually being willing to talk about his feelings his difficulties and then trying to uh, uh, communicate dero uko ugenda uhindura mugenzi wawe mwashakanye intambwe kuyindi intambwe kuyindi intambwe kuyindi kumugenda muhinduka for instance what we are preaching Instead of saying you have to go and do evangelism. That's a command. If you very right. And we can guide. Think about your neighbors. Your relatives. If they haven't heard about Jesus. And when did they die? Where would they go to? And then they went to hell. And they saw you in heaven. And then how would they feel? So they're in hell and then you are in heaven very happy. How would they feel about you? And what they might what might they say to you? They might say, well, why didn't you tell me about Jesus? I saw you many many times. You never told me about Jesus. And how will we feel about that? So do, you, so do you want to be able to tell them about Jesus before they die? Do you want to be able to tell them about Jesus before they die? is by teaching. Teaching is, you know, telling them, you know, what we can do for God is really great and God will bless us. Then we can also talk about teaching your children. You can teach them. But actually, sometimes people are not ready to be taught. Sometimes we want to teach them, but then they, when they hear, when we teach, they don't like it. Dero, abamu bara nicharu wa se baka kuri chira. Ariko baka kuri wa wigi shi kuri wa shaka wiga na kuzi ni nigi shi wigi shi. But when we guide them step by step to understand the importance. To do evangelism, then we can teach them to do evangelism. Okay, so number three is teaching. Number four is telling them to do or commanding them to do. Commanding or telling. Now it's important that you write this down. Very helpful to you, I tell you. It's like, okay, now, commanding, there is strong commanding and also gentle commanding. Gentle commanding will be like this. Let us go and do evangelism together. And let us cook together. Let us greet the people together. And then commanding now, strong commanding. Like sometimes husband talk to wife or wife talk to the husband. Go wash the dishes. Why didn't you do it? <laughs> Why didn't you do it? 
So that's that's stronger, but we don't have to do that. I don't know what to say. Please wash the dishes for me. Okay, number five, the use of law is accusing. Write this down, accusing. For instance, saying, you did not listen to me. You did not pray. You did not obey God. You did not pray. You did not obey God. Now there is a place to use that sometimes. But people will be more sensitive to, you know, criticizing. This is accusing or criticizing. And number six is condemning. No, no, in Chagatana Tunu Guchirao Iteka, Chango Guchirao Munuruganza. You have no hope. When God doesn't like you. You face the judgment of God. Now, these are very strong. Now, but let me tell you, many people use the law in what way? Now, let me ask you, you tell me which one it is, okay? Well, let's go through this list again. First is exploring. Now, if you didn't write down, you can write down. Exploring. Exploring. Kuvumbura, changu kutahura, guiding, ku kuyobora, teaching, very good, and then telling or commanding, kugeru mu muzamu kumutegeka, accusing, kurega, condemning, kuchira urubanza. Okay, now let me say something and you tell me which one it is. Ye kujiri chombo kaha ni mama muri wongire ichombozi. You have been too lazy. You didn't preach the gospel. What is this? Condemning. Uh, it's accusing. Now the difference between accusing and condemning is like this. Accusing is saying you didn't do it, you did wrong. Accusing. Condemning is saying you as a person is not good, it's bad. You have no hope. 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 You have no You don't love Jesus. You have no hope. You have what is that? Command. Not command. You did not preach the gospel. You do not love Jesus. What is that? Accusing. 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 Have you noticed that? Maybe we too can easily say words of accusation. Is it the most effective way? Is it the most effective way? Did Jesus always condemn or accuse his disciples? Is it Jesus yijeze arega yijeze asiruanza kuvijeshwe? Now the Bible does have accusation and condemning. But God has many statements to encourage us and to give us, say, we can do it. Number one, and also to motivate us with the love of God. Jesus said to Peter. You be a fisherman. I give you the key to the uh, gate of heaven. And then, you know, people will enter the, the kingdom of heaven and then no one can prevail against you. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you, you are witness to the end of the world. And then you will be 
Have you noticed that all this has promises connected to the command? And also the husband talking to the wife or wife talking to the husband. Have you heard words like this from your spouse? You don't care about me. You don't listen to me. What is that? What is that? Just now, the six. Which one is it? You didn't listen to me. You don't love me. What is it? What is it? It's not condemning. Accusation. It's not condemning. Condemning is condemning the person, setting him as having no hope. That's condemning. Accusing is pointing out the problem. Now, let me ask you, have you heard that much from your family members? They say, Have you heard a lot from people around you? You don't care about me? You don't do the jobs well? You're not good. Now sometimes they don't say it. They just show you an expression. Look at me, sometimes they just show you. Then what expression is that? No, no, no. Six point, what is it? What is it? The six points, what is it? 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 It's accusing, right? Accusing. Do you like accusing? No, but they What did you say? Accusing. Yeah. He, he okay. Now, do you like being accused? Do you no. like? No. Anyone like accusation here? Do you <laughs> like? But people say it a lot, right? Do people say it a lot? Actually, you notice, you listen to people. You notice people use that without thinking because they didn't realize it's accusation. So we can explore with people and guide people. You know, I like to be able to understand you better. I like to know your feelings and what you're thinking about. And and do you like that we can communicate better? Is this much better? Now, let me tell you, this is a habit hard to change. Okay, now let me give you a situation and ask you how you can say it in the best way, okay? For instance, you want to encourage someone to love the Lord. Now, if you say, if you say to the person, um, you don't love the Lord. Do you want to love the Lord more? What are you saying? You don't love the Lord. What is that? What is that? Condemn. It's accusing. It's accusing. Condemning is more heavy. It's like condemning this person as a person. Accusing is pointing out something bad they've done. Okay. Okay. So we don't really have to say it that you don't love the Lord. Instead we can guide them. And uh, do you like do you like to be pleasing to the Lord? 
Ese umva washimishwa no gushimisha Imana. And what do you think you can do and then the Lord is happy? Ese umva wakora iki niki wakora kugira ngo nezeze Imana? Do you think God is happy when you pray to him? Ese wibwira ko Imana yakwishimura mu zisenze? And do you think the Lord will be happy when you love him? And how can we love him more? Then I'm in guiding with questions. Now this is something we need to practice. Okay, now I'm, 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 I'm giving you a situation now. Someone doesn't like to pray. And you want to guide them to that they want to pray more. What can you say? What can you say? Can someone try to say it, you know, because you need to practice. If I keep telling you, you won't learn it. You have to try it. Okay. Anyone want to say what you can say to someone who doesn't like to pray and then how to guide them to pray? Anyone want to try? Mm -hmm. What did he say? Uh, saying you can go together uh, to pray with that person. Okay. Now, then you are doing an action. I go together to pray. Uh, no, from what he said, he is like requesting that person, is it possible he can go with you for prayer? He okay. has spoken in Swahili. Okay. okay. So this is inviting to action. Invite. So can we go together to pray? Now I'm talking about how to raise up the motivation of a person to pray. Okay. Okay. She can say it first. Ah, she can raise her hand first. I can show her the benefits of praying. Say it again. I can show a person the benefits of praying. Okay, show the person the benefit of prayer. Uh, is telling them, right? Okay, so you are I can first tell the person the goodness of praying, and then after, I can tell her the benefits of praying. Okay, so tell her the benefit and the goodness, right? Yes. Now, what is this? What if she says set? What is that? How prayer is good and bring benefits? What what is that? When she said that? Yes, what is that? What's she said? Mm. What She's saying, number one, she said she talked of the benefits of praying, and then second, she guided the person. Okay. Now, actually, what she's doing, the goodness and the benefit is telling the person. Telling the person is which one? Is teaching. It's not wrong. All this have its place. We just need to know which it is. Which is it? Okay, now you wait because there are two persons who raised their hand. Okay. Okay. Say I'll say, how about the one behind him? Also raise your hand. Right? <laughs> Okay, say, okay, you. <laughs> you first show the person love. <laughs> and you tell the person God's love, that God does good. 
I think that is how you can direct person or guide this person the life of prayer. Okay. Ibo kusenga kusho kama kiti la nishe arama senge shoko senga imana pana uchiswa tango kuzamitore. Okay.